Hello, this is Dread, and in today's video topic, we're going to be talking about one of the little small issues I've had with the game over the past few weeks, and that's item availability. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I've had a very large amount of people either come to the Twitch stream, which I stream every so often when I have time, or, you know, comment on the YouTube or come to my Discord, and they'll be like, Dread. I'm trying to play my character and finish it, but all the items are way too expensive. I'm having too many problems with it, and this is specifically for uh, Merchant Guild, by the way, but this applies to COF a little bit. Now, I'm like, okay, all right, let me see what items you're trying to buy. So we go through and look at their items, right? And it turns out the reason why they're having a struggle uh, trying to find the items and buy them that they want is because they either do not exist or they have the potential to almost never exist in an entire cycle. What do I mean by that? Well, it seems like as though uh, there's a lot of people that, like, for the first week of 1.1, red rings were a decent price. They're like 5 million or whatever, uh, something like that. They're like 5 million gold, something stupid like that, right? They're very cheap for what a red ring is. If you know how hard a red ring is to get, you know that that's insanely cheap, right? And then the, you know, the gold economy do shenanigans, the Zetgeist, the things everyone afraid of, you know, the like, oh my God, my children, uh, they, they can't get good grades at school because of the gold dupe in last epoch, you know, you know, the fear mongering. So, uh, they're like, hey, Dread, uh, red rings were 5 million gold a few days ago, and the gold do happened, and they're like 20 million gold. And my response to them were, why'd you ever think red rings were ever going to stay at 5 million gold in this economy? So uh, <laughs> they were baffled and like confused when, when I said that. I'm like, I told them, do you know how rare a red ring is? <laughs> and they're like honestly no it's like it's not that rare right like i can get a one lp one pretty easily right so yeah we're gonna go into the planner here real quick and we're gonna talk about this uh in a little bit more detail okay here is the red ring it requires level 80 so it doesn't even start dropping until level 80 zones and uh as mike put it only like 1% of the player base ever gets to empowered monoliths. So you have a subset of a subset of players, right? Cool. So that could ever uh, have a chance to drop a red ring. So you have a very small sample size of people who can actually drop a red ring, right? Now you can use runes of ascendance, yada, 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 but like we're not, neither here nor there, right? Get to empowered monos, otherwise you probably won't be dropping a red ring. Like, sure, you might drop one in a level 80 zone. You might get lucky. Who knows? Who cares, right? Now, we're going to keep looking here. So, we can hover over these modifiers here. It says, chance 6% for 1 LP. That means that 1 in 20 red rings will drop with 1 LP. That sounds pretty fair, right? That sounds pretty fair. But the problem is, as you may well know, uh, red rings are very rare. So if we're going to look here, uh, the last epoch tools planner does not show this. Sadly, uh, the database on, uh, max roll does. It's like one of the main things that makes this a little bit better. Uh, I still like the planner myself personally, but this is one of the features that the max roll planner has over the LE planner. Hopefully you can, uh, move this over and, but we're going to look at some numbers here. So rune of ascendancy chance. This is pretty much what this means is. One in 733 unique rings you ever drop are going to be a red ring. That doesn't sound that bad, but remember, when you're in Merchant's Guild, you don't really drop that many rings. Even if you get like the ring prophecy, you're not dropping that many rings. So either you're spamming reward echoes, which it would take 733 of them to find a red ring, right? And then not only that, we also need to make sure it has good rolls because it does have rolls by the way, resistances and stuff like that it does have rolls. Obviously you'd be happy with any red ring to be honest, but rolls do matter. 
right? But it's one in 733. So that's every single rune of ascendance you do. And if you use a rune of ascendance, it's LP uh, chances halved uh, and all that, right? So all that taken into consideration and to drop that many unique rings, you're going to have to push up corruption, get rarity on your monolith. And even then that's not even that good because rings just don't drop that often. Okay. But now we're going to try that with the LP stuff. So let's say that you are in Merchant's Guild, you are 100 corruption, base corruption, and you are trying to get a one LP red ring. Okay. It's one in 733. And then you multiply it by 16. That is the average red, uh, average unique rings you have to drop before you get one. So to give you an idea of how much that is in my mind, that's like almost one in 12,000 rings, unique rings, not just regular rings, unique rings, one in 12,000 rings it takes to get, uh, a one LP red ring of Altaria in Merchant's Guild. Obviously with the advent of the Nemesis system, you can put the red ring into the, you know, Kringle later, but you probably won't get one LP. You'll probably get like some random stat, which is fine. But yeah, to get a one LP red ring, right? And then you have to win a one in four to get your intelligence on it. Cause I'm going to assume the, the chatter was playing like some kind of like mage or whatever, right? So. My question for you is, what would you put a red ring up for sale, right? They're like saying like, oh, went for 5 million to 20 million. And if I checked the last time I checked, they were at 100 million, but that was before I went on break. So it's probably significantly more than that, especially with the gold dupe Z guys, right? So what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? It means you should not be trying to aim for a red ring in your builds, okay? At least not for the first week. If you're playing the entire cycle, sure, you might be able to buy one and do fine. Or if you giga juice, you uh, abuse the, you know, the gold dupe shenanigans, right? There's a lot of other ways you could do shenanigans to get a red ring easier. But those are the main ways, right? Which is funny because in COF, it's actually way easier to get a red ring due to all the modifiers and stuff like that. So if you do want red rings, I would have at least they're just playing COF, right? Now, this is just this right at Laria ring red ring of Atlaria. But the big, uh, another problem I had was someone was playing a bleed Falconer build, right? And they wanted an upgrade to blood Roost. So they had a two LP blood Roost, right? So it is a one in 44 chance of unique gloves, which is not that bad. Uh, one in four LP. So one in four of them have LP. Then one in 39 have uh, two LP, right? So if we were to multiply those two numbers, uh, it's like about one in 2000, like one in one, one in 1600 or something like that, I think. Yeah, one in 1600 uh, unique gloves you drop would be Bloodroos blood and gloves drop a lot more often than rings do. I'll tell you that much, right? But then... What they were trying to tell me, they're like, hey, I want a 3LP one. There's none on the market. It's ruined my day because I can't upgrade my character anymore. I'm like, what do you mean 3LP blood roost? What are you talking about? What kind of drug are you on so that I can be on it as well? Look at the LP ratio. It's one in 1.2K. So this, you, you go from 1600 unique glove drops to drop a blood roost, right? You go from that and then you get like, fuck, it's like one in 44,000. So it's like 40 times like the rarity. So you go from one in four, which is like maybe like, uh, let's say like uh, 10 times as rare, right? And then from... 2 LP to 3 LP is 40 times as rare, right? You should never, ever, ever expect a 3 LP blood roost on the ground, ever. And then you should never expect a 2 LP blood roost with good stats on them, because as you can see, they have very large roll rates. So just having a 1 LP one with good rolls or a 2 LP one with mid rolls, that would be what I would aim for at the end of a character if you're going to play it for the entire patch. Now, that's, that's enough said about that. 
Now, the issue is this is not the player's fault. In Last Epoch, there is no way of knowing. Not only do you not know what the LP ratio of an item is, you don't know how rare it is in relative to other items. So you just think that like, hey, this LP system, right? It's pretty easy to get one, two, three, four. You know, it's not that big of a jump. But having 40 times the rarity, right, of the last upgrade, which was an already rare item, is so high, it's exponential. And what, like, in the, it's so exponential that, like, Two LP blood roost might exist, a few of them might exist, but you'll never see a three LP blood roost unless you get insanely lucky, right? And that's like the problem uh, I have with it. And it's not anyone else's fault. This is just an EHG problem because we should have this info either readily available in like the gamer, the game guide, which they do have, by the way, uh, just like a table of like these drop rates and stuff like that, or, you know, they could just put it in game if you hold all over the item right now that would add a lot of bloat to the ui but that would solve the issue of these people having like ridiculous expectations of items that you should have on builds and what should be pushed in terms of like what is the quote-unquote end of the character now there's a few reasons why they probably haven't done this. The first being that it kind of removes the mystique of the system. Like, you know, like, oh, like, you know, like this guy's got a two LP red ring, you know, like uh, I could drop it technically. Uh, that's like the same thing with like the Ravenous Void shenanigans. It's like, you know, you could drop a four LP Ravenous Void, but you could also, you know, be eaten up by a star at the end of the universe. You know, you could also do that too, you know, technically, you know, if like for some reason you manage to like make yourself immortal and then you manage to end up inside of a star and then that star blew up and became a black hole, you could get consumed by it. That could happen. But, you know, it's it's the same kind of shenaniganry or it's like, you know, it technically could happen. I won't deny it, but it's insanely rare. But they won't tell you how rare. It's so rare. It's so ungodly rare. The, the jump between some of the LP ratios is so ungodly rare. They just shouldn't even exist at that point. Like, I'll be honest, if Blood Roos just went from 1 LP to 2 LP and then stopped having LP... I don't think it would change anything. It would just make it easier for people to understand the rarity of items and the strength of items. And they could just nerf items that way too. They'd be like, all right, cool. This item only can ever get one LP, but it's easy to get one LP or something like that. They could play around with the system. Not every item needs to have four LP. Um, that's really up to them in that regard. But I don't think every item needs to have four LP. Obviously, it would remove some of the, oh my God, my friend dropped a four LP Ravenous Void. But like you look at their, uh, you look at their character and it's like offline, you know? So like it would remove some of that, but at the same time, like it's also making people have insanely unrealistic expectations on gearing. Now, with all that being said, this has been Dread. Off to go rant about something else. Bye.